dear students today i want to discuss another important chapter the gravitation while studying gravitation you should compare the relevant terms with electrostatics it becomes more helpful to memorize the relations and keep in mind for neat and key entrance you can wait minimum 3 to 4 questions from this chapter for j main two questions at first we can move with the universal law of gravitation you know the force of interaction you know it is attractive in nature between the two particles m1 and m2 or it is given as f is equal to minus g m1 m2 by r square where g is called the universal gravitational constant and it does not depends upon the nature the size of the bodies the nature of the medium between the bodies and it got the magnitude in si system 6.67 it can rise to minus 11 and in cgs 6.67 it can rise to minus 8 and keep in mind the gravitational force of attraction is always attractive in concept and hence the sign as negative and is a conservative force for a closed path the work done becomes zero and is acting along the line joining the two particles and hence it is called a central and is said to be the weakest force in the nature and keep in mind another very important concept to solve the problems the principle of superposition the resultant force f acting on a particle due to number of point to masses is equal to the vector sum of forces exerted by the individual masses on the given particle look in addition to that the vector form of gravitation concept and so the force on one due to the other chap masses 2 3 etc to n can be represented like that and you keep in mind there r n one is nothing but equal to the displacement vector the pointing from n to one we can move with the some good problematic situations and here the two stationary particles of mass em1 and m2 are d distance apart a third particle lying on the line joining the particles experiences no gravitational force what is the distance of this particle m1 and keep in mind while putting the mass small m there the force of interaction you know the attractive nature because of m1 it is acting in this way and the attractive nature of m2 is acting in this way so they cancel so we can say their magnitude of interactions are become same at first we can find what is the force on small m due to the first mass it is g m1 m by r square the force on small m due to the second char second Uh, mass is g m to m by the separation there the total separation minus that uh, r so d minus r the whole square and it is given the two force of interactions are same and hence we can write as g m and m by r square equal to g m to m by d minus r the whole square you can cancel the same terms then you arrive the concept as d minus r by r the whole square is equal to m2 by m and on solving we get the answer as r is equal to d root m1 by root m1 plus m2 a very good question is waiting three masses each equal to capital m are placed at the three corners of a square of side small a calculate the force of attraction on unit to mass placed at the fourth corner so the capital m masses are placed at 1 2 3 location and that unit to mass is at the fourth location so we want to find what is the total force acting on it at first we can just analyze what is the force on one uh, on fourth mass due to the one so that is labeled as f for one and due to the three they got the equal magnitude reason the separation are same 
but the direction are opposite you know they are attraction and hence they are max an angle of 90 degree so individually their magnitudes are equal equal to g into the capital m into the small m the value is 1 by the separation the side of the square it is a square but that two are acting acting with an angle of 90 degree and we can find the result and that's nothing but equal to root 2 times g m by a square and keep in mind the result and is acting along the diagonal then one more co contribution is there the force on that fourth mass due to the two the distance under consideration is nothing but equal to the diagonal it is a root 2 a so we get the value as g m by 2 a square and this is also acting along the diagonal then we can apply our principle of superposition then you get the answer a good concept a mass capital m is split into two parts small m in, uh, and capital m minus m then which are then separated by a certain distance then what ratio of small m by capital m will maximize the gravitational force between them so we know the force is nothing but a capital g into the small m into capital m minus a small m by r square you can just multiply but in order to get the maximum force with the small m value the change of mass the df by dm should equal to zero so at first differentiate force and then we can give the solution small m by capital m is equal to 1 by 2 that means that as parts are identical it is a very important concept the next very important concept is nothing but the acceleration due to gravity no the force per unit to mass simple formula as waiting capital g capital m by r square on the surface of earth in terms of density it's a very important equation as a 4 by 3 pi r rho g very very important so now we can just think about the variation of acceleration due to gravity due to the altitude at a height h from the surface of earth we can say gh is equal to capital g capital m by r plus h the whole square but if you apply the binomial theorem with the condition as the height is very much less than the radius of earth there you get the equation as gh is equal to g into 1 minus 2h by r and that equation is we can use only when h is very much less than capital r and we can find the fractional decrease in value of acceleration due to gravity as a delta g by g equal to 2h by capital r due to the depth we can use the simple relation as gd equal to g into 1 minus h by r with a percentage a decrease in g is equal to delta g by g into 100 percentage is equal to d by r into 100 percentage. Due to the rotation of earth, we can say as g lambda equal to g minus r omega square cos square lambda. And you can put the value of r and the omega together, you get the value g minus 0 0.0337 3, cos square lambda. And where lambda is nothing but the latitude from the earth equator. And keep in mind the very important concept. If the earth starts rotating at the angular speed about 17 times its present value, there will be weightlessness on the equator. But G at the poles will remain unchanged. At the pole remain unchanged. There is no effect on it. In such a case, the duration of the day becomes the 84 minute, the time period of an infinite length of pendulum. And again, due to the non-spherical shape, you know, the radius of the poles is less compared to the equator radius around 21 kilometer. And hence, there is a difference in uh, acceleration due to gravity of the value 1.8 centimeter per second square. For Earth-like sphere, we just uh, think from the uh, zero radius to uh, outside value the variation of g with r is given keep in mind till the capital r value the g is directly proportional to small r 
and outside it is uh, 1 by r square we can move with uh, some good castings a body weighs 200 newton on the surface of earth how much will it weigh half day half way down to the center of the earth and we know the variation of g dash is equal to g in 1 minus dr if we just to multiply with the mass we get the weight and it is given on the surface as 200 and here d is equal to r by 2 you get the answer another question the imaginary angular velocity of the earth for which the effective acceleration due to gravity at the equator shall be zero so g dash is equal to zero at the equator lambda becomes zero so we can write easily g is equal to omega square r we can easily find the value of omega is equal to root g by r that got the value good concept as 1.25 newton rise to minus 3 radian per second the weight of an object at earth surface is a 700 gram weight what will be its weight at the surface of a planet planet whose radius is half and the mass is 1 by 7 of that of the earth you know the gravity on a respective planet depends upon its mass and the radius its own radius and hence we can easily write for the planet as g into mp by rp square and here the mass of the planet and the earth comparison with the mass of the planet is m by 7 and the radius of the planet is r by 2 we can just substitute and you get the value of gp is 4 by 7 g and if you just multiply with the mass we get the value of weight so it becomes 4 by 7 of mg and is given as 700 so 400 g weight it's a good question the gravitational field in density gravitational potential are the two important terms as a vector and a scalar in order to represent the magnitude or uh, if the elect the magnetic uh, the gravitational field in order to represent the gravitational field we are using the two terms the gravitational field in density and gravitational potential uh, see the gravitational potential at a particular point here is it is nothing but the work done so we can easily find it is nothing but the force per unit mass so that is i is equal to minus gm by r square and the direction got the same direction as that of the force but the gravitational potential is the work done per unit mass and here the gravitational field in density due to a spherical mass distribution look at any point outside we can consider the whole mass is concentrated at the center like a point mass and hence intensity become minus gm by r square but on the surface you can replace that is small r by capital r but at any inside point at a separation small r from the center its value is given as minus gm by capital r cube into small r a very very important relation that means the intensity of field is directly proportional to the separation see the graphical variation for uh, uh, that uh, gravitational field intensity with the separation but keep in mind for a spherical shell and totally different if you just consider the point well inside and there is no mass presence there and one contribution from the outside is cancelled by the another point and hence we can say the gravitational field intensity at any point inside of the shell is zero look the variation and another good concept the inertial and the gravitational masses are equivalent we can just go with some problematic situations for gravitational field infinite particles of each mass as a capital m are placed at a position x is equal to 1 m 1 meter 2 meter 4 meter etc to infinity find the gravitational intensity at the origin and all other mass particles are attracted got the same direction so we can just add by using the principle of superposition i1 plus i2 plus plus x to drag to plus infinity 
So the first particle's contribution as a GM division by 1 square, by 2 square, by 4 square, plus x drive to infinity. We can take the common factor GM into 1 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 square plus etc. So it becomes a geometrical progression. We can add them as a GM into 1 by 1 minus 1 by 4. You get the answer as a 4 by 3 GM. And another one. If a spherical shell is cut into two pieces along a chord as shown in figure, and the point P and Q have gravitational intensities IP and IQ respectively. Then how we can give the relation? But we know inside a shell the intensity of gravitational field is zero. That means IP plus IQ should equal to zero. Therefore IP should equal to IQ but, but they are not zero. It is a very very important concept. Another very good question, a solid sphere of uniform density and radius R exerts a gravitational force of attraction F1 on a particle P distant 2R from the center of the sphere. A spherical cavity of radius R by 2 is formed in the sphere. The sphere with the cavity now applies a gravitational force F2 on the same particle. Find the ratio F2 by F1. A good, good question. Look the steps we have to use. So the figure, at first you just consider it as a whole body. And hence we can say the interactive force as F is equal to GM by the separation to R square. But what happens if a cavity is removed? So we can just consider it as that. So the remaining one is what? Then F due to the whole minus minus the cavity contribution. We can consider another particle as the cavity having um, the radius as r by t. Then what is, uh, we can just find its mass by using, for the whole one and the small one got the same um, density, volume density. By using that you can find the mass of that r by t radius. Then you can use this concept. The force due to the whole minus due to the cavity and hence you get the concept. So you just divide, you get the answer. The gravitational potential. The gravitational potential, the work done to take a unit mass from infinity to that particular point with a simple concept as minus gm by small r, a scalar quantity. And keep in mind, the potential increases as we move away from the capital M mass. And there is a good relation between the intensity of the gravitational field and the potential. As we can write as V is equal to minus integral of I dot dr. Where I take the value as minus dV by dr. The negative gradient of potential. That is called the intensity of gravitational field. Look, the gravitational potential due to a solid sphere at different points. The simple relation. We can consider it as a point of mass and hence minus gm by r on its surface as minus gm by capital R. But well inside, it is a very, very important concept. The value of potential at any point inside at a separation small r from the center is a minus gm by 2r cube into 3r square minus r square. And keep in mind, if you just substitute a small r equal to capital R, you get the same value on its surface. It is the very important. Look, the value of that potential at the center when small r equal to zero, it becomes a three by two times of the potential contribution due to a point on the surface. Look, the graphical variation of potential with the distance. And the drawing is on the third quadrant because the potential has a negative with a positive r. That is a good concept. Due to a spherical shell, we can say like this one. At outside a point on the surface, it's the same concept as that of the um, solid uh, sphere. But well, inside, you know, the intensity of the gravitational field is zero there. That means that the negative gradient of potential is equal to zero. That means the potential is a constant at any point inside the shell. Got the same value as that of on its uh, surface. A good concept, very, very important one. 
the gravitational potential energy got the simple relation as minus gmm by r the change in potential energy when a point mass m is moved vertically upward through a high dh from the surface of earth it's a very important relation that is mgh by 1 plus h by r but keep in mind if the height is very much less than r we can take the equation as mgh but if h is very much greater than r you have to take mgr if three particles of masses m1 and m2 are kept at the three corners of an equilateral triangle of side d the gravitational potential energy of the system yes it is the just algebraic sum of the three contributions keep in mind it is a very important concept look the two good questions the infinite number of bodies each of mass 2 kg are situated on x axis at a distance 1 2 4 8 meter respectively the resulting gravitational potential to this is system at the origin will be you have to just to take the sum of gm by r the first contribution with the separation as 1 2 4 like that so again it become a geometrical progression and with a recurring term of 1 by 2 so you can easily write as 2g into 1 by 1 minus 1 by 2 you get the answer four bodies each of mass m r placed at the different corners of a square of side a find the work done work done on the system to take it in one body to infinity so you have to take what is the potential energy change for the two situation at first we have to find what is the potential energy because of the four particle system so the contributions you have to write as u 1 2 2 3 3 4 and 4 1 then 1 3 and 4 2 so we have to express it then after you have to avoid the fourth one so then three particles are there then we can again find what is the potential energy in the final configuration then you just to take the difference you get the answer a good question keep in mind a body of a mass small m is placed on the surface of earth find the work required to lift this body by a height of r by 1000 or h is equal to r but at the first case is there the height is very much less than r you can just use the concept as mgh but and the next case is uh, h is approximately equal to r so you can use this concept as mgh by 1 plus h by r you get the answer look another one a body of mass m kilogram starts of falling from a distance to or above the earth's surface what is its kinetic energy when it has fallen to a distance or above the earth's surface we can think with the conservation of energy at a height to or above the surface from the center we can take as a 3r and hence the potential energy we can treat it as minus gm by 3r plus the kinetic energy it is at rest so zero equal to when losing its uh, r separation its a potential energy combination become the contribution become minus gm by 2 uh, plus kinetic energy so from that you can find the kinetic energy take the value as this one a good concept escape velocity we know that escape velocity take the equation as root 2g by r root 2gr or equal to root 2g capital m by r and keep in mind it is independent of the mass size and the shape of the body and the direction of projection it all depends upon the parent planet its mass its radius and keep in mind for earth it is 11.2 km per second what or maybe the location of the particle and for moon it is 2.4 km per second for sun 618 km per second look the relation for the orbital velocity of a satellite it is gm by r the whole rise to on by t where small r s r plus is and keep in mind if that satellite is more close to the earth's surface it moves with a velocity of 8 km per second and the escape velocity take the value as a root to times of the orbital velocity look the time period 
And you give in mind the square of the time period is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis. And keep in mind for a class orbit, keep in mind for a satellite revolving very near to the surface, then the time period becomes 2 pi into root r by g, that means 84.6 minute with an angular speed of 1.24 into 10 rise to minus 3 radian per second. And also, if a ball is just allowed to move through a tunnel through the earth, along the diameter or the cord, keep in mind it executes as a jump with the time period of the time period of an infinite pendulum with a value of 84.6 minute. Look the relation for the kinetic energy, potential energy and the total energy of a satellite. For the kinetic energy we can say as G capital M M by 2R. The potential energy take the value as minus G M M by R. The total energy is minus GMM by 2R. Look the relations between the potential energy, kinetic energy and the total energy are very very important for the examination point of view. Keep in mind some extra concepts when velocity of a satellite increases, its kinetic energy increases and hence the total energy becomes more negative. That is the satellite begins to revolve in orbit of smaller radius. When the satellite is taken to a greater height, the potential energy increases, it becomes less negative. But the kinetic energy decreases. Look the relations between the velocities, the orbital velocity, the escape velocity and the velocity of a particle. If it is less than the orbital velocity, that particle will undergo the spiral path. But it got the same velocity as that of the orbital velocity, it becomes a circle. But if it is greater than orbital velocity, but less than escape, it is undergoing an elliptical path. But it is equal to the escape velocity of uh, a, an object, then it becomes a parabolic path. But if it is greater than escape velocity, the trajectory, the path of the uh, particle is a hyperbola. The variation of different energies with R. A good concept to keep in mind the total energy and the potential energy for a satellite, for a bounded system are negative, but the kinetic energy is a positive scalar quantity. The energy required for a satellite to leave its orbit around the earth and escape to infinity, that is called the binding energy with a value of minus value of that uh, um, total energy here G M M by 2 R. The Kepler's laws, the three important laws, the all planets move around the sun in elliptical orbits and you keep in mind the aerial velocity is a constant. The very important concept, the aerial velocity as a dA by dt take the value as L by 2m. The angular momentum L is a constant for a planetary motion. And hence we can say R cross P is a constant. That means MVR is a constant. That means the velocity is inversely proportional to the separation between the planet and the sun. And hence the planet when it closes to the uh, sun, it moves with the maximum speed. It is a very important concept. And the third one, the square of the time period of a planet is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis. That the three laws are very important and especially the second and the third one. One question, if escape velocity on Earth's surface is 11.1 km per hour, then find the escape velocity of, on Moon's surface. If mass of Moon is 1 by 81 times the mass of Earth and the radius of the Moon is 1 by 4 times the radius of Earth, we can just use the relation as a root of 2 capital G capital M by small r. And you can just substitute the um, relevant quantities, you get the value as 2.46. A good question is waiting. A geostationary satellite is revolving around the Earth. To make it escape from the gravitational field of Earth, its velocity must be increased. So we know we have to find the percentage value. So V minus V0 by V orbital by V orbital into 100 percentage. We know the simple relation for the escape velocity as a root 2gr 
and for the orbit velocity as root gr so you just got the value root 2 minus 1 by 1 so 0.4 and 4 into 100 percentage just need 41.4 percentage so that is a good question the time period of a geostationary satellite is 24 hour at a height of six times of the radius of earth from the surface of earth the time period of another satellite whose height is 2.5 re from surface you can just use the relation as the square of the time period is proportional to the cube of that radius so you can just substitute as r1 and r2 but have to take the separation from the earth's center then you get the answer look another simple concept an artificial satellite moves in a circular orbit around the earth the total energy of the satellite is given by capital E the potential energy of the satellite is it is a simple concept and you keep in mind it is a double the total energy so you get the concept see the kinetic energies of a planet in an elliptical orbit about the sun at the positions A, B, C, R, K, A, K, B and K, C respectively. A, C is the major axis and S, B is the perpendicular to A, C at the position of sun. Then, and keep in mind, L is a constant, the angular momentum is a constant for a planetary motion. That is, M, V, R is a constant. That is, V proportional to 1 by R. And based on that concept, when it is closest to that sun, that is at the position A, got the maximum kinetic energy. And so, we get the answer. So, K should be greater than B, than C. So, to us the answer. So, the students, it's a very important chapter that try to do maximum MCQs. Then you can gain maximum score. And it's a simple chapter, but very good questions are waiting. God bless you. Take care.